particular area of, uh, of motoring, which we think is fascinating. It was an education. It was an education, and we'll see, see how much we've remembered in a moment. But, uh, I mean, this card, do have a look at it, Planet Voodoo. Lance himself decide, uh, describes it as rather sinister, and I have to agree. Um, you know, he's got boa constrictor skin covering the gauges, cobra skin covering the, uh, the seats, uh, and, and as well as Gucci reptile print. Um, gold tooth grill from a 1953 DeSoto. Um, the headlights are called Avian Design um, with 1953 Buick headlamp inserts. But none of this is probably making any sense to you if you're not come here now looking at the car. So do come and join us. Uh, Richard, what's the next one on our, on our list? Well, the next one we're going to look at is the car that what was the class winner uh, yesterday when we announced the awards. This is a 1941 Ford Business Coupe. And, uh, Richard James brought this car up last night, our TV, to receive his well-deserved award. Uh, this was first customised in the late 1970s and com completed in the early 19, uh, sorry, the early 20s by Tim Muziko of the Long Beach Cavaliers in Long Beach, USA, no less. Uh, it was imported by the current owner in 2016 and fully restored, including a bare metal grease spray, the upholstery was redone, and a full mechanical overhaul. And remembering the, uh, the, the language that you just used on Voodoo, this was chopped four inches, so it's lowered four inches. It was nosed, it was decked with period accessories, including Appleton, Appleton spotlights, and we know how you should point your Appleton spotlights now. Not out. Not out. As you can see, they're correctly positioned, pointed in, um, but it also had uh, fender skirts and flipper hubcaps. You can see the flipper hubcaps right there. Um, and it's, we've got a picture of the original car here, and you can see, Peter, it's looking a little bit different now to uh, as it did originally. But it was a deserved winner of the custom class yesterday, and we're very grateful to Richard James for bringing this wonderful 1941 Ford Business Coupe. I think, as you say, Richard, what's quite interesting is these cars still are recognisable as, as, as they were originally built by the factory, so I think that's fascinating. But, um, the next car is a 1948 Mercury 8 Coupe, owned by Tim Wadsworth. And uh, this Mercury retains its original 8cm flathead block with a few modifications. The history has been traced back to the early 70s in Mansfield, Ohio, where uh, Wyatt, Wyatt Lockman mildly customised the car, largely as it's seen today. Again, it's been nosed, so the hood ornament's been taken off, decked and shaved. Uh, it's got flames painted on the side. I mean, that's really where the time and effort goes into these cars, is in these custom paint jobs. All completely unique. It's pure artistry. It really is beautiful. Um, it's been lowered at the back. Uh, I think, what, what did Lance refer to it as? As, as a scraper? Or uh, something along those lines? A scraper? It's a scraper? Yeah, because it's so low at the back. Um, purchased by the present owner in 2015 from Eastlip, Long Island in New York. And more recent modifications include air ride, four bar link, suspension, um, further pinstripe in, and many other details. Fabulous car, and again, Appleton spotlights uh, pointed inwards. Crucial. <laughs> Well, Peter, the next car we have is this 1950 uh, Ford sedan. Um, the idea behind the car was to create a traditional custom in the style of the early 1950s, using techniques and parts from that time. Uh, the car went to Marco at Juarez Fabrication. He restored all the bodywork and did the custom work, including chopping the roof, removing the trim, handles, filler door and badges, and Frenching, he goes, not an adjective, Frenching the front and rear lights. So that's uh, setting in the more into the body Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Removing the chrome surrounds, I believe, and setting the more into the body Lance was referring to, uh, it came from uh, French cuffs. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, there's, a, there's a logic behind it. Um, now, the car has been sprayed in its original colour, which is a very attractive colour. And the look is completed with Foxcraft fender skirts. Uh, again, it's got the uh, dummy Appleton spotlights pointing correctly in. 
It's got 90 foot deep holes with little hub caps. It's from low at the front and back, and it has a 1953 forward anniversary steering wheel. And it has traditional 1950s Mexican blanket covering the seats, which uh, I learned yesterday was uh, a very traditional feature of these cars back in the day. Attention to detail, I think, is an overriding influence here. So, um, next, ladies and gentlemen, Richard, we have the uh, 1953, and it's a pity that Scarlett's not here to meet us. If she is, please do come and say hello, because uh, it was fascinating learning about your history with this car. But anyway, it's a 1953 uh, Austin A40 Somerset British car, and Scarlett purchased this Austin as an original example in 2013, at the age of 19, her first car. She drove it for a while as stock, as standard. Uh, the bodywork was in great condition, but the interior was uh, disintegrated and the engine had a few issues. So she installed, and this is a, a 19 year old lady, she installed a, a more reliable, powerful, and faster 2 litre Ford Pinto engine. And then took it on a track day, and unfortunately, on the track day, she put the car rolled onto its side. It, it, it sustained much damage, so um, while she drove it for a few years with these battle scars, she decided then to smarten it up, and uh, with her dad, they decided to make a custom in the original, uh, or in the traditional 1950s American style. Inspired by a custom Austin designed by James Yaff, a three-year home customization job started in her dad's workshop, including chopping the roof, uh, they took a large section. The car was in fact born as a four-seat car, the Austin A40 was a four-seat car, uh, sorry, um, Four door, I should say. It's now a two door car, so a proper coupe. Uh, the back seat was taken out and discarded. It's been shaved, so the door handles have been removed, and many other details. It's painted in a uh, 1940s Plymouth colour called Sumac Red. Do have a look and have a look at the brochure and read the story on this car because it is fascinating and uh, does illustrate the passion behind a lot of these uh, cars today. I think we should point out as well, Peter, that in the, uh, the judges' um, comments on this class, uh, although it wasn't the winner, they did want to commend Scarlett and her father for this wonderful job. So this car and the owner were highly commended by the judges. We're uh, standing next to the 1959 Chevrolet El Camino, owned by Neil Clark, and a stunning looking motor car this is. Uh, exactly what you'd expect from a custom American car of its period. Now Neil bought the car nine years ago as an abandoned project and built it with his son, who was 14 at the time. It was customized in the late 1950s um, in Southern Californian style with a late, with the late great Larry Watson inspired scallop paint job. It's also got the shaved hooded door handles, it's got lake pipes and the um, required Appleton spotlights. And underneath the Camino is all hot rod, it's a 350ci roller cam V8 dynode at 412 horsepower. It has a four-speed automatic with a posi traction rear, disc brakes up front, along with air ride suspension front and rear sway bars plus quick ratio power steering, making it an exhilarating but very easy car to drive. Thank you Richard. I, I, I'm going to ask, answer the gentleman's question directly. I think you asked sir about why the A40 doesn't have any door handles. Firstly, it's had two doors removed, but at the same time they've uh, used a technique called shave. The door, the, the door handles are basically removed. It's a styling thing and... Uh, I'm sorry? How do you open the door? Uh, that's a very good question. You have to ask the owner. Probably she doesn't want us to answer, uh, uh, open it. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I think you can get electric locks now. That you can use modern electric locks with a key fob, and it can operate from the inside. That's possibly what they've done. I don't know, frankly speaking. But anyway, the, uh, for those in the know, the term is called shaved. <laughs> Thank you. So finally, Richard, we have this wonderful, we met the owner yesterday who was hugely enthusiastic about this car, and who can blame him? It's a 1962 Ford Thunderbird Series 3, owned by Des and Sarah Watson. And in the world of custom, size really can matter, especially when it's imported from California. 
And the previous owners um, bought a stock 1961 Ford Thunderbird for a new project, inspired by the late Larry Watson, who was a legendary American custom painter and pinstriper. The pinstriper basically means just putting very thin stripes along the cars, along the flanks of the car. Uh, it's a technique that's been used in coach building for many, many years, since the dawn of time, even for traditional uh, horse-drawn carriages, pinstriping was used, and it's about a very fine hand-painted line. So pinstriping is very much a technique still used in a car um, building today. And, uh, so after dropping the height by two and a half inches, fitting the rigor bellflower exhaust um, tips, I haven't seen those, have you seen the bellflower tips? Um, and replacing the original colour carpet, um, the bodywork can begin. And uh, the paint box in Essex took on the task of this wonderful paint job. It really is spectacular, especially this sunlight. Do come and admire this because over 575 man hours went into this, and they were using traditional techniques. Um, it's called the lace effect, and this is how they would have done it back in the 50s and the 1960s. So it was painted through lace to give you this wonderful effect on the bonnet, as you can see. So uh, do come and enjoy this, but it really is about the paint. But I mean, again, Richard, the original car is, is something of beauty in itself. Here are the Belfield bricks. There you go. They're hard to miss. They are now, aren't they? Um, but again, you know, the sort of jet age styling of these cars, you know, it's like a, looking at it from the back, it looks like it could take you to the moon, doesn't it? But these, uh, these lights at the back, it really is one of them, the fins. As you say, very comfortable that period, and just wonderful to see. And it's, 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 a, it's a work of art, wonderful to see it here on the field. That's, uh, put it better, work of art, absolutely. Work of art in lace. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be meeting a uh, representative uh, from the custom car group later on the stage. I think it's at 4 o'clock on the Talking Concourse stage. So if you're here, uh, do come and have a listen to that. I'm sure it will be lots of fun.